Hi, this is Amy, and this is the Smarter Gmail series, and this is Lesson 3. Um, we talked about Google Voice last time, and I sort of left you hanging because I showed you an extension, and I didn't show you how to get it. So I thought we would start with that today. So we're going to open up a new tab in our Chrome web browser and go into the Chrome Web Store. And now we're going to look for Google Voice, and we're going to install the extension. And this is it right here. It will run right up here in your Chrome browser and when you click it you'll be able to see all of your Google Voice materials like text messages that people send you at that number, voicemails that people leave you, all that kind of stuff. So um, take a look at that. It's a really handy little extension. The next thing that we're going to talk about today is using conversation view in your Gmail. So I heard from a lot of my techie friends that as soon as they got Gmail, they wanted to make it look just like Outlook. And so the first thing they did is they turned off conversation view. Now I'd like to ask you, please just give me a couple of days here to turn this back on. This is where you do it. You go to your gear in the top right, go into your settings, it's on the general tab, and conversation view off and on. So. I implore you, all of you stackers out there, to give this another chance. Conversation view is amazing. I'm going to show you this thread right here of seven messages back and forth about a room reservation. Well, if I have conversation view turned off, then I see all seven of these messages. Trust me, guys, it is worth it to work to understand how conversation view works, and it's not that hard. It's just like a stack of papers on your desk. So if I have a stack of stuff that goes together, I'm going to put it together on my desk. I might even paper clip it or, you know, staple it or something like that. So here it is. Just think of it as your online stapler. All these messages relate to each other. They're all together. They're all stacked and it's really nice. So if I put this back in my inbox, it's nice because it's just one stack. Here it is, one stack of seven messages. And I don't have to have it cluttering up my inbox. Let's look at my inbox here for just a second with conversation view off and then let's compare. So it, sorry, let me save. Sometimes we have to save, sometimes we don't. We have to save this one. Save and look, oh my gosh, my inbox looks so much more cluttered. So let me come back again. I'm going to turn my conversation back on again and save. And oh, what a relief. There they are. I've really only got these few things that I have to deal with. That's what my inbox means. It's stuff I have to deal with. So the next topic we're going to talk about today in this short lesson is archive versus delete. If you just started using Gmail, you probably already noticed that the archive is more prominent than the delete, especially if you have it connected on your phone. You'll notice that if you use Gmail as the way to connect it on your phone, your default when you swipe or um, on your Android phone, your, de your default will be to archive. So let's look at this message. Let's say that I've read this message, I'm finished with it. My normal world I came from where my school district or my business has to host all this information, I'm going to hit delete when I get done because I want to save space. But in Gmail world, because we have conversation view, we never want to hit delete or almost never. Now if somebody sends me an enormous file and I really, really don't need it, maybe I might hit delete, but honestly I just don't. I just don't hit delete ever. I use the archive button. So here it is, it's so prominent, archive. But there's another way to use archive, so I hope you haven't stopped listening yet because this one is really great. So let's say I'm going to send a message and I would really never email myself, that makes no sense anymore. It used to, but it doesn't anymore. But let's say I'm going to send a message. Well, I want to be able to send and archive. I want to send it and at the same time it goes to archive and this is a lab. Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to, going to go into my labs and I'm going to find send and let me search. Well, I always tell other people not to hide their mistakes when they do screencasts, so here's one of mine. That used to be a lab. Looks like it's graduated. I didn't even know. So here it is in general. Send an archive and show send an archive button in reply is what you want. 
So this, this lets us automatically send an archive so that when we send, it's going to go into our archive. If somebody replies to us, it's going to come back. And let me show you the other thing that people complain about. They say, I don't understand how this stacks up. Well, here's the first one. Here's the latest one. And they say, oh, I need to print just this one. I just need to print this one. Well, okay, open that one up and here's the print. Or they say, oh, I need to print this whole conversation. How can I do that? Well, first of all, don't do that. But, but if you need to print the whole thing, there's the button right up there at the top of the whole thread of the conversation. So here it is in all its glory, all seven messages. And there's the print button, print all. I don't want you to do that, but maybe you need to. There it is, print all. So today we looked at conversation view and archive versus delete. I hope you learned something new today. Thanks for joining us for part three of Smarter Gmail.